So um, I think you can still all talk to me, even though you're seeing me. Is that true, Michelle? Yes, no? I, see, okay. I see you. I hear you. Because I want people to be able, you know, I don't want you to wait. If you have something you want to say or ask, just please pipe in. So I think pretty much everyone here got their kit. If you signed up late and missed that, I will be happy to provide you with a kit. Oh, what's um, the kit? Okay, who is that? Lorraine. Lorraine, the, the I'm new, sorry. The newbie. <laughs> yes, Lorraine, thank you. Glad you're here. The kit is, we are making a mini quilt, which I will get you a kit. Um, I believe this uh, session will be on the YouTube videos. And what the kit includes is nine patches of fabric, which I have pressed and starched, a piece of batting and a backing, and I think binding fabric, which looks like this. And basically what we're trying to do is just go through the steps of quilting. Uh, so everyone kind of has a basic mini quilt that they would have completed and understand the different steps of making a quilt. This would apply to large or small. I'm gonna cover hand sewing and machine sewing. So you can do whichever, or you can just hang onto your kit and do it later. I'm, I'm pretty sure the video will be up or we'll be helping each other with sewing in the future. I'm more than happy to answer questions about this. Mine are gonna become little trivets that I put in the microwave under the bowls. And then I just pick up the corners of that and take things in and out of the microwave because it's way up over the stove. So that's what mine will be, but um, that's, that's just the experience, okay? Yes. Is this like, um, this is like a different project you've been working on since you've been doing this group or? Is, is this uh, Lorraine? Yes. Yes, um, so we usually, either have someone demonstrate something or we just oh, work okay. on whatever we want to work on. When we were always meeting at Edgemont Park, somebody would say, well, I can come next time and show X, Y, Z. And it'd be, oh, cool. We'll watch that or work on what we want. And um, basically everybody would bring in whatever they wanted or show off what they made and tell people and we all help each other. And it's all volunteer, just a group of people having a little club and sewing together uh, with an occasional formal like demonstration. Okay. Um, so what we decided, uh, the last couple of Zoom meetings we had, what we decided was everyone seemed to have an interest in quilting. And when I used to teach uh, basic sewing, one of the things I would do is show just how to make a mini quilt. So we go through the steps of quilting. So quilt is a noun. It is a thing. Quilting is a verb. That's when you sew together layers of fabric. No, but I okay. quilt. I quilt you, already. You already quilt, so you know yeah. what we're talking about. And mm -hmm. you can go <laughs> do something else. If this is totally oh, okay. um, uninteresting to you, you can stay and watch. You can help me. If okay. people have questions, you're allowed to put in your two cents because I might learn from you. <laughs> okay. It's almost like a guild in a sense, you know, yeah, like a quilting yeah, guild. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, just an informal club because I couldn't find, when I moved here from uh, Maryland, where I used to sew and teach and sell machines and all kinds of stuff, um, I didn't really find a lot of sewing close by. So Michelle was uh, nice enough when I joined the Montclair Knitting Circle, I told her I sew and she's eventually we worked into having this little club i'm glad because the, there's not no no sewing clubs here i know it's <laughs> it's, it's a desert we got to change that anyway so um so with the um preparation if you don't know about quilting um people have questions like um do i pre-wash my fabric mm -hmm. um my answer to that is I usually do because I get my fabrics from all kinds of places and I don't know how clean it is. And I like to have things washed, pressed and organized um, because when I don't do that, I can't seem to get anything done except reorganize and reorganize and reorganize. So um, these fabrics were donations or things out of my stash that I'm not using. Okay. And I just tried to make everyone's kit in a way that there'd be something appealing you know, okay. if you really hate it, you can always donate it to Edgemont Park. And when we have our little yard sales again in the future, people will buy them. Um, now, uh, 
the reason I say press and I use best press lately, mm -hmm. um, got it at Joann's with a coupon back in the day and I got a refill thing and I'm still using up my refill. But the starch in my life, and maybe I'm doing something wrong, it usually gets flaky and white bits on it. So the best press does not do that. Okay. Um, and what, I, what I'm trying to do is to get my fabric flat. I want it to be flat and have a little stiffness, some body to it. I know there are quilters that buy their quilt fabric, do not wash it, use the sizing that the manufacturer puts in the fabric, and that's what keeps their fabric stiff. So no rules, just different ideas. So, um, and like I said, remind me, um, Lorraine, and I'll get you a kit. So what I want you to do is, oh, and as far as pressing goes, I'm talking about pressing. I'm not talking about rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. Usually when you're sewing, you wanna press your fabric, lift, move press because that way we're not distorting the fabric okay you're not ironing you are pressing and that's a difference you're absolutely right yes so mm -hmm. when the fabric gets removed from the bolt you no longer have that salvage edge the salvage edge is what kind of keeps it all together and keeps it on the bolt from shifting when you start cutting all that off things can shift mm -hmm. we're trying to prevent the shift on the fabric and one of the ways is to press um, I all another tip. I usually put the best press on the wrong side or the right side or whichever and turn it over. And then I press all in the back and then I flip it over and I, you want it to be dry. You don't want it to still be damp. Um, and I usually do that without steam. Um, so the, uh, first thing you want to do, we'll just get right into the sewing. And like I said, please interrupt me if you have a question. The first thing you want to do, whether you're hand sewing or machine sewing, and I'll put this on my table. Tell me if you can't see as usual, folks. So this is my little, well, this, here's my partially completed block. Oh, sweet. And I have some different colors on this one. So I like red for a center color. This would be a good place to do a little, um, what they call fussy cutting of a little image. Could be right there. Or you could do a little hand embroidery or a little uh, monogram for that center block. It's kind of like what your focus is in your block. And then typically, tradition. so this is why I'm showing you traditional. Now you can do whatever you want, of course, but this is a traditional setup for a nine patch. And, um, what we're trying to do here is sew together these three to make a row, these three to make a row, these three, and then I'm going to show you how to press the seams in opposite directions, nest them together so we can get nice sharp corners. The important part usually with the quilt, what people look at or see as quality is do your, your little corners match up. Okay, so um, are all of you, who's hand sewing? It's Marie Claire, I'm hand sewing. Okay. Me too, this is Sharon. Okay. Marie Claire, Sharon, uh, Lorraine, you're just gonna uh, be watching, I guess. Oh, you mean now? Oh, without the kit, I'm watching. Right. Um, Joanne, what are you doing? I have a machine. You have a machine? Okay. Anybody else want to pipe in? Marianne and hand sewing. Marianne hand. Uh, Jennifer sewing machine. Jennifer's machine. And Christine, Christine you got a machine? Machine, correct. Okay. Did I miss anyone? Me, Beth. Beth, what are you going to do? I already did it on the machine. You've already finished it. I got excited. <laughs> Good for you. Did you do any watercolors already? <laughs> She's ahead of the game. I would have just sewn it the wrong way. So I'm glad I didn't start it yet. Well, I did think I didn't 
do it right with the corners. You know, it could have been blue inside and then flowers on the four corners, but. Can, can I highlight see, you? Can we can see you it? it? Yeah, you want to see it? Where are yeah. you? There you are. Add spotlight. Oh, that's oh, nice. Nice. That's that's beautiful. Nice. beautiful. Look at those corners. <laughs> One of and them you is did a little. By wet. machine? Yes, by machine. That's the back seams pressed. And opposing <laughs> directions. <laughs> you have your uh, seams in the back, some pressed in and some pressed out? I pressed them to the dark side. Okay. As I had been taught with quilting so that you don't see them through the light. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Good. I don't know if that was right or not. Okay, it um, is. It is one of the one of the suggestions. Can you see the little boo boo? <laughs> the corner didn't quite match up. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh no! Don't that's show it. us that. No, if you can draw, if you can ride by on your horse and not see the the, the, <laughs> the number, so right? This is what you are quilting. Mm -hmm. If you can get the the rule is if you can gallop by on a horse Thank and you. you don't see it, it doesn't exist in quilting. Right. <laughs> um, one question, Sue. Yes. Would a trick be about getting sharp corners to have the um, the edging, you know, equidistant for all of them? You know. Well, that's part of it, and I want to show you um, how you nest. Once we get these three rows done uh, separately, you know, we have three complete rows. I'm going to show you how to press the seams in opposing directions. So what we'll do is we'll sew these three together and we will have the blue seams perhaps pressed toward the blue on the wrong side. Then we'll do the next one and then we'll press the seams toward the red. And then on the final row, we'll press toward the blue. And what's gonna happen is when we lay them on top of each other, they're going to nest, oh. okay? And and what the, and I'll show you that I have one partially done. I did a little advanced sewing for you guys this time. So I did this by hand. Now, if you're hand sewing and you want to start working, the first suggestion I have: you have your things um, laid out for your first row, middle row, and bottom row. I would mark your quarter inch seam on the middle block. Okay. So when you're hand sewing, you the guide that you're going to use is that you're going to have your seams, your quarter inch seams marked. Let me move this aside. Here's one, this is the wrong side of my block. And you're going to mark a quarter inch. You can use something that's basic like a seam guide or a ruler and you can put little um, like dots or whatever. Can you see well enough what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm here, Beth. I'm seeing Beth in the picture. I'm sorry, Beth. You're you're, you're lovely, but I oh. all I see is you and 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 a small and a small Susan. So I'm not sure. Okay, I have to be unspotlighted. Right. There you go. There you, there you go. I think I did it, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Did it for you, Sue. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Oh, Michelle, I thought I did a good job. Oh, well. <laughs> Keep trying. So right here, if I don't have any of these uh, quilting type ruler uh, things, I'm going to just take my seam guide and mark a quarter inch and a quarter inch and I can even just take the straight side of the seam guide and draw a quarter inch line. I want to have that all around the center of the row. This is a cool tool um, that you could also use. Let me see. Here's my quilt ruler. I could use my quilt ruler if you have any of those on a flat surface. Find the quarter inch line and mark. Anyone have questions about marking equipment? What are you, yeah. what's the pen you're using? This is a Frixion Pilot pen. 
it's not like fabric, waterproof, whatever. <laughs> this one is just from a regular office store. It has an eraser, which works somewhat well on the fabric, pretty well actually, but it also just happens to go away with the heat of an iron. It's the most recent tip I've heard from quilters I know. Um, and they come in different colors. So that's nice to see on your different fabrics. You can do something as basic as a pencil. Okay. Just a regular 2B pencil. You wanna dull the point, sharpen it, and then just take some scrap paper and make kind of a rounded point. And you can also use that um, to mark. You could take your elementary school ruler and mark and a regular old pencil. So you don't have to go buying special equipment, but if you want to, this is an OmniGrid ruler that has a quarter inch. Uh, it's only half inch wide, it has a quarter inch line. And this is super, you know, the, the thing to use. This with the Frixion would be like what the, the last I heard before I left Maryland, <laughs> latest and greatest. Um, the trick is you want to be able to see the lines. Um, one of the things you always want to remember to bring along is your eyeglasses. Um, if you want to go or if you have something, this is uh, Dritz uh, Taylor's marking set. It has replaceable little chalks in blue, pink, and white, and it has an eraser. And this marks well, like here's my dark fabric and I can put the white in and make a nice line. You can probably see that. Um, there's also the white water soluble pencils at Joann's. Um, Grandma used to use a sliver of soap when her ivory soap got down to almost nothing. It has a nice sharp edge and she would run that. So, you know, quilting has been forever something that you use what you have and if you want to go get fancy gadgets, which used to be an illness of mine, <laughs> you can do that. I would okay. say if I could just throw in here that Frixion, I was given one in a class I went to and I'll never use anything else from now. It is great. You just run yeah, that great. iron over it and it all goes away. You can start yeah. again. Yeah. The only problem is when you have um, dark fabric, it might yeah. not show up. And that's when I go back to the uh, to the white pencil or the Dritz little thing, um, Taylor's chalk marker. So we're just right, don't so, use dark fabric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another way to do it. Just don't use dark fabric. So so now I have my piece that's marked. And here's um, the one I had started hand sewing. I'll cover that and then we'll go to the machine. So let me mark this with the with the white so we can see it, I think. So anyway, I've got my mark on here quarter inch. I don't mark the other squares because when I tried doing that in the past, I had a line on this side and a line on that side. And I was trying mm. to get those lines to match up. And I tell you what, it doesn't happen. So um, these are perfectly cut. I was real careful with my quarter inch and I'm gonna sew from this side. Oh, does anyone curious about the cutting of the squares, how I did that? Yeah, tell us. So what I did with this project is I got my, and some of you already saw this. It's a um, Go Baby from the uh, Accu Quilt Company. And you have these dies. that come in um, shapes. Or squares. Hmm. And you basically put your fabric Okay, let me do it from this side. So you can see you put your fabric on top of the dies. So here's the die. There's like a little blade in here. Oh, wow. They make them big, they make them electric. This is what I got when my arthritis was killing me. And um, the kids said, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, I know just the thing. 
So you turn this or push the button if you have the electric one and out the other end comes your perfectly cut squares. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That is and I have the smallest one with the least amount of guys, but it just really helps a lot. Um, yeah, it's really cool. You can layer up to four pieces of fabric, do four at a time. So that's how I cut your guys' quilt. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it's just easier to teach everybody when we're not together if everybody has the same thing. So anyway, we have our rows laid out here. Where'd they go? And I already hand sewed these two rows. And I'm going to work on this one. So I'm going to put wrong sides together. Now I don't necessarily pin, especially when I'm hand sewing because I pick myself all the time. I'm always pricking myself. Um, but uh, you can if you like or need to. To hand sew, I'm using the glacé thread. The alternative would be the all-purpose sewing thread with uh, being run through beeswax. This is something I bought, I think it was from Dritz. The beeswax or the glacé or the thread heaven conditions your thread, keeps it from tangling and gives it a bit of ease going through the fabric. Now what quilters uh, call for are these little teeny tiny needles that I can almost not even feel with my fingers. So I use a bulkier needle than you're supposed to. And when I make my knot, I just want a small indiscreet knot. So I take my needle, wrap the, hold it, hold the thread against the needle, wrap the thread around three times, put my finger and thumb over the thread I've wrapped and pull the needle through. So kind of like a French knot in the air. And now I have a small, mm. good knot, mm. okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my markings where I can see them and my other piece right sides together on the back. And I'm gonna start sewing where this quarter inch line intersected. I don't need to go all the way off to the edge like you do with a machine. I'm just gonna sew in this one area. And the way I like to sew is to pierce in the corner. And I like to kind of fold the fabric and push the needle up and down, trying for smallish stitches, not that important. And here I've got like one, two, three, four stitches. I'm gonna pull my thread through those four stitches and pull the fabric to make sure it's nice and flat and not gathered. Then I'm going to back stitch one stitch and continue forward. The back stitch is what kind of locks the seam in. Uh, if I didn't lock it, it would be a gathering stitch or a temporary basting stitch. Sue, you're, yes. you, you when you knotted, you put, it was two strands, correct? You didn't make it a- No, I'm sorry, it's one strand. It is one strand, okay. I Yeah, it's hard for me to see that. So it is just sure. one, yeah, okay. So I'm so glad you asked. It's one strand and it is about, I don't like it super long. The no. longest I'll cut my thread is about 24 inches or shorter. Better to have to, and so, in choosing the needle, I make sure I have one that's pretty easy to thread. There are needle threaders available and even an automatic one that works pretty well in the notions area. Um, or uh, always when, need, when threading a needle, if you put the eye in front of something white mm -hmm. and you can see the hole better, that always helps. Anyone else have uh, needle threading tips? Uh, my question is, when you do the next knot, can you just do that again? That was really interesting. Yes, <laughs> I sure can. Me. You like that knot, huh? Yes. So I'm going in and out and in and out several times, pulling my thread, 
flattening my fabric and back stitching. And I'm gonna do this all the way to the other corner and then I'll show you how to make that knot again, okay? Okay. And when this is done, I'll have finished my three rows hand stitched. Now, I'll give you some tips. I don't like to sew with a deadline. I used to sew for people and I don't do that anymore because thank God I don't have to. If I do things for money, it would be teaching. But if I can be relaxed, if I can have good body posture, um, it's a more enjoyable experience. Um, and I do step up and I'm usually antsy. So I have to jump up and do something a few minutes and then come back rather than sit for long straight periods of time. Now, when you get to the other corner, you just wanna do a couple stitches backwards or a back stitch rather than needing to do a knot. And then I have little thread snips somewhere here, let's see. And then I snip the thread, leaving a little tail. Okay. So here is my seam. I don't know how well you can see the stitches. I should have done that yeah, with a different is... colored thread. But hmm. there you've got your seam. Wow. Yeah. Now let me yeah. repeat. Thank you. Let me repeat that knot. I've got my single strand either glacé thread or treated in the beeswax or thread heaven. And I hold the tail of the thread and point it towards the tip of my needle. Mm -hmm. Lay the thread against the needle and wrap three times. One, two, three. Put that wrapping between my finger and thumb of my left hand and pull the needle through while just holding that little bit together. And oh. then I have a nice little knot. Wow, I like that. Thanks. Yeah. It's a great tip. It is. And three wraps seem to be enough without being too bulky. And it, I tell you, it works every time. I don't remember who I learned it from, but I thank them over and over. I'm just sharing things I heard before. <laughs> Did not invent it. Is, okay. it. is it a special kind of beeswax? Because I've got some beeswax that I use for all sorts of things. Uh, this, so can this I just is, take one? This is beeswax in a case that you can buy at the Notions Department. But I have a hunk that I bought from a beekeeper at a farmer's market that I plan on using next. Um, the contents is 100% beeswax, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. So how's everyone doing now? Did that, did that make sense? Yes. Okay. I like that nut. Great. I'm glad. I'm glad. If that's all you learned today, it was worth it to come, right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Okay, so now here I have my three rows and I've hand sewed, sewn these together, these together, these together. Now I'm gonna turn them backwards to the wrong side. Here you can see my stitches a little better, I think. They're not super great, they're okay. Some are too long, some are too short, not a big deal. And what I wanna do here is when I finish my seam, it's gonna look like this and I have to tell it which way to go. So in my center seam, I took my seams and I pressed them the red to the blue. On my first row, and I'm probably not doing it to the dark. Oh, I did do it to the dark on this one. So the dark and the light in my world doesn't matter in this one because I just want them to nest, okay? The bottom row, I pressed my seams toward the middle block. So toward the middle block, away from the middle block, toward the middle block. And in this case, I'm hand sewing and I'm usually got everything in my lap, hopefully with a table nearby. I'm finger pressing. Um, you can get a bamboo turner presser and you can press this way. You can get your iron and you can press it. I usually do iron with the sewing machine because I'm on a table near electricity with my iron nearby. 
And now we want these to go together and get that really perfect corner. These four corners right here of the red square. We want them to match up as well as we can. So I'm going to take the first row and the second row and put them right sides together. And what I hope you might see is that it kind of nests. Because I have this one folded toward the blue and this one folded toward the blue on the opposite side, the fold will sit together. It's nesting the seams. Can you see that at all? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, and I didn't tell you to bring pins, but I hope they're just part of your sewing basket. You can put a pin either crosswise from one seam allowance to the other, or you can put two pins, one on either side in the quarter inch seam allowance, holding them in the direction in which they go. Now we're gonna do the same nesting with the sewing machine, okay? And I don't care as much about this end or this end. I don't care at all right now about the bottom. I want these corners to match, okay? Now, with the hand sewing, we do need to mark the seam. So I'm gonna go back to my ruler wherever I put it. You guys lose things when you're doing stuff all the time. <laughs> oh, good, good. I'm in good company. Oh, Yay. So now I'm going to mark. Make sure I have my original mark that I can see, and I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the Frixion, and I'm going to make sure on one side now, not both. I have marked my quarter inch seam. Oops, boy, I do it so much better when you're not watching me. Mm. We didn't see it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew across this row and open it, do the next one. And in that particular case, sometimes I press them open or to one side, whatever I feel like doing. Same thing, make sure everything's nice and flat and smooth and press and start in the corner. Out and in, out and in, out, pull, flatten and backstitch until I have my seam finished. In and out. And I'm just trying to get to the same place on the line. So some people are like, well, where on the line? I usually do right on the line or just inside the line. But once again, we're talking you know, something that you won't see from a galloping horse. So I'm not gonna let my um, need to be perfection to get in the way of this. I wanna get it completed. Um, also, this is pretty easy to rip out. I'm sure you can imagine and redo. And sometimes when I look at it, it's just, get my block open, get it all pressed. And I look at it and say, oh my goodness, you would see that from a galloping horse. <laughs> <laughs> so I rip that part out and redo it. And maybe not that day, maybe another day, because maybe I'm a little too irritated, but uh, I don't do these things on a time limit. If I'm gonna do something for Christmas, I probably start it now and have it sitting in the closet for a while because I don't want the anxiety. So I go all the way across, removing my pins as I go. 
And then so, I wind up. So yes. it's Marie Claire. Quick question. Are you doing that one back stitch after every three stitches across yes. the entire row? Yes. Every three or four stitches, I go back one. Every time I do in, out, in, out, pull, flatten, I go back a stitch. Thanks. Yeah. And it could just be a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. It just prevents it from you know, if you just had it going straight across and something got pulled, it would gather it. And you don't, you want your quilt to lay flat, your block to lay flat. So I'm preventing gathering. When you get those three rows together, this is what you have. Now I have mine sandwiched already, but you have the idea. This is what you have right here. Um, typically on this, the rows that go across, I will press them open to prevent too much bulk in the corners. Mm. Um, I've heard other people say, oh, it's not that important. You can just, you know, press to the dark or whatever. But that's just my preference. I find it easier to quilt when things are as flat as possible. Anyone else, especially who is it, Lorraine, who knows how to quilt, what do you do? I usually, I've been pressing open. Press all of them open? Yeah, mm -hmm, because it seems to match better when I get to a corner or if I'm matching something. Uh-huh. Did I you ever try the, I used to do the one to the side, but like you said, if it's, if it's got a lot of intersections, it's too bulky. It makes it like a bump. Right. Have you but ever I, done I've been this? Doing the, I've been doing the um, open thing, like the new regular oh. sewing. I like that better. Okay. Anybody you just else? have to stitch smaller. Yes. Well, and you could by stitch... machine. I don't do it by you know, but I just do it the machine. Okay. So question, did you press them all open or just one? No. No. No, the three rows three that rows. go on top of each other, I pressed open in, in. and then you know the opposite ways each row, so right. that when I put them together, I can nest them. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you nest them properly, um, the corners match right up. And they're flat. Yeah, they're, and they're flat. The, yeah. 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 And then what did you press open at the end after you've sewn the nine squares together? Uh, this seam that is the horizontal across three rows. Okay, okay, horizontal, thank you. This is the one right here that when I finish it, I, and this is for me, for both for hand and machine sewing. This is the one that I take the time, takes a little more time, but I take the time to press that one all that goes off the two that go all the way across in a nine patch. I press those open. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking questions. Let's me know what's on your mind. Anybody else? So I'm busy sewing it by machine now. Okay. And I'll just follow along until, you know, when you say press, you don't really mean take out the iron and the ironing board. You just mean press with your fingers. You can finger press, yes. Or you can use a, you know, hand pressing type tool. Oh, huh. you can but, tool for everything. <laughs> well, I tell you, I'll tell you my problem. <laughs> I used to work inside the Joanne store in a company called Husqvarna Viking. It was called the Viking Sewing Gallery and the company, the corporation rented a carpeted area from Joanne's. And I sold the machines, I taught the machines, I managed the store and I did all that for years. A uh, very small operation. And the good news was I had all these discounts and coupons and employee <laughs> discounts and I would see when things went on clearance because they were a little overstocked and I have so much so many gadgets <laughs> yeah, and why not get it but that, that actually looks like a shoehorn I think I'll use a shoe I like to improvise yes a like, shoehorn or a spoon, a shoehorn. yeah a spoon uh-huh yes or or a knife or something you know the, the yeah. back side of I the think knife. if it's somewhat curved like your thumb or finger is what I like, but you know, you yeah. try different things. But I also am normally the person that grabs from the kitchen sink or whatever. 
But having worked in that situation, I got so much for even less than half price that I used to just say, oh, what the heck? It's 50 cents. <laughs> no parents. Why yeah, not? why not? But uh, Sue, look at this is what I have here. It's a nice. Let, let me let me get back to you. Remove spotlight. Uh, let me try to spotlight you. This is Jennifer. Yes. Okay, so this is this is kind of what I have. It's a knife. Oh, nice! And it has a rounded, nice rounded edge. So this edge should work for me, I think. Very well. Anyone else have something that they use or no? Not with me. Not with you. Okay. So, okay. Have yeah, mind. and I have a shoehorn right here. This works too. <laughs> that would work well. I. American Airlines. Beautiful. Yeah, that should work too. I I don't have it with me either, but my husband um, sanded down a nice uh, a piece of wood and and I use that. Um, looks very similar to the one, Sue, that you have that that looks like a shoehorn, but uh, but but the presser. You know, yeah. I, I, I found that when I it irritated my fingers if I kept doing it with my fingers. So yeah. So yeah, he just he sanded down a really nice piece of wood, small enough, you know, to make it work. So very nice. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Anyone else? Let's see. So, so oh, all these things just come so naturally to you. You just grab the pressing thing. And with me, it's like, wow, that's something new. So I'll just observe. And if I need you to show more of it, I will ask. But thank you. Yes. And that's kind of um, when we were meeting as a group. I'm sorry, I keep moving my phone. It's my holder is not. I want to probably get a new one. Um, everyone in, in the club that we started, the Sew Together Club, um, has different expertise, experiences, different ways of doing things. And I love that kind of interaction. Uh, it's usually twice a month that we get together or Zoom. I love that because it keeps me interested in the sewing and it shows me different little tips. And um, I, when I do something, I want to show someone and my husband is like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you did that. <laughs> and you guys are like, oh, cool. Look at what she did. And that's so great. But now I've been sewing since Girl Scouts. Um, on and off my whole life. My mother sewed, my grandmother sewed, both my great grandmothers sewed. Um, so it's not only genetic for me or, or inherent memory, but it's also I've taken class after class after class. I've taught different kinds of people from little ones to big ones to people with uh, mental impairments in nursing homes. So I have a lot of experience. It's, it's one of those things when you do it all the time, you don't even look at the, you know, you're cooking a recipe, you don't even look at the recipe anymore because you don't need to, right? right? But it's just from repetition. And I encourage everybody to take classes or join different clubs and things and see what's out there and what different people are doing. Go on YouTube, all kinds of stuff, so. Here's my, I, I went further on my hand sewing and you can see my corner matches up pretty well. Yep, perfect. Okay. Now, this is my block finished. Sewn by hand. And if you're gonna continue on and I encourage you to do that or wait till we get together, all I've done here, and this will happen as well with the machine sewing, is I have laid down my muslin backing piece, which is the largest. My batting goes on top, which is perhaps a little smaller or the same size. And then my square in the center, and I have hand basted it from center out. And then we will start the hand quilting process. Um, you can also, they sell in the Notions area, quilters, straight uh, safety pins, and they have a little dent in them. Let me grab those. I actually moved my camera into my sewing closet here, guys.
instead of taking things in and out and put it in the middle of the room. So these are my curved quilting safety pins. And what you typically do with these is you keep them in your container unclipped, open. And you go around from center out. And of course, if this were a bigger quilt, it would make more, it would be of more importance. But you put a pin, the curved side makes it easier to go in, down to the surface and out. And this is how you baste your layers together. That's instead of using the thread, Instead of the thread, you can also use these. And I usually, with them being open, I place them all, look at the back, make sure I, they went through and that there's no puckering uh, as far as pleating of the fabric. And then I go back and close them. And now this is ready for quilting. It's all basted together. You can also use regular old safety pins too. You can. I find in doing a big quilt, you know, I have that arthritis. Yeah, but I mean, uh, this is not a big quilt. So if you had a few, you had nine safety pins, you're you're good to go with nine regular mm -hmm. safety pins. Absolutely. I used to use, and I lost them all except one. My son's old diaper pins. I used to do cloth diapers, and I loved using the diaper pins. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, those were those had a nice big head to deal with. So, so that's where I think some of you might be able to get to this point. Or Beth um, is going to have six more completed. <laughs> she'll, have have them all, she'll have them quilted and bound as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Just keep going. Just keep going. Um, but if you like, I can now um, answer any questions or go on and show you how I quilt by machine. Yes. Let's see the quilting. I, that's what I would say. The quilting through the layers or the piecing by machine? Oh, I thought you said quilting. I meant piecing. I'm sorry. Oh. I meant. Sue, do you, have that, that, um, do you have that soft uh, layer thing in between the two uh, layers? Yes. For this one that I've yeah. already based it, I have the muslin. And this soft layer is called batting. Batting, okay. Batting, B-A-T-T-I-N-G, and then my pieced block. Now, the batting is not, a lot of times people say, oh my gosh, it's so thin. This is what quilters, especially hand quilters use, and even machine quilters. Some people, when they think of a quilt, they think of a comforter with the big fluffy batting. Mm -hmm. That is not usually something that is done uh, in like home sewing type techniques. And if you do use it, you would do something called tying or tacking occasionally. It's almost impossible to quilt it well, that really thick batting uh, with a machine or hand sewing. So this is cotton that I've given you and it's, mm. it's a thin uh, batting made especially for sewing. Mm. So the needles don't get stuck in it. And um, that's typically what's used in all your quilt shows and everything. Um, so, uh, so this batting, when you wash the, I mean, after five or 10 washes, does it kind of clump up in between there or is this a type that just stays flat? That's an excellent question. There are different types of batting. My favorite brand that's uh, on Amazon or Joann's or whatever is called Warm and Natural or Warm and White, W-A-R-M. Uh, it's made by a company called The Warm Company. If you go on their website, they have some free patterns and instructions. When, you, when I typically buy by the yard or package at Joann's. Right there, it tells you, you need to quilt every so many inches. Some will say you have to have your quilting stitches, which we haven't gotten to yet. But when you're sewing through the layers, they need to be like two inches apart. Mm -hmm. Warm and natural, you can go like, I think four or five inches apart. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's really. And it does not do that shifting or shredding, Jennifer. Oh, oh okay. The, this type I gave you probably needs to be a little closer, but it's a small quilt. So that's why I gave you this. Somebody had donated it and um, you can't do four or five of this. I would say like two, two or three. But the, the further apart your quilting is with the unstable batting, the more chances it's gonna shift and puddle and feel funny and get thin in certain areas. Very good So question. the stage we're at right now, would you say like we're halfway done with it or is there still a lot of sewing kind of to be done? I'm just well, trying to... Yeah, what I was- I'm not rushing, next... I just need to do <laughs> What I was gonna do next is demonstrate how to do the piecing by machine and how to set up your quarter inch seams. And then I was going to, um, if we still have time, if people wanna see, show you how to do the quilt through the layers, the quilting. And, um, but after that, we have to do our binding. Hmm. So once this is, these layers are all sewn together, the actual, after your base did the actual quilting, which I haven't shown you yet, you will trim everything even to the block and you'll put, we'll put binding oh, around. Okay. 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 Sue, it's Marie Claire. Could you just quickly show me the direction of the basting stitches? I'm not clear about yes. where you place those. So, so the rule with the basting stitches is that you want to start from the center and go out, either horizontally and vertically or diagonally. Because this is small, here's my first knot. And I basted long stitches, like an inch long, all the way to the corner and did one back stitch. Then I came to this corner because this center is already together. Started from here and long basted to here and back stitched. Okay, from here, back stitched. And here I've done the pins. So what you're trying to do is you're, spo you're trying to keep, uh, once you get to the quilting through the layers part, you're trying to keep thinking from the center out, center out, okay? So you're only doing center out to each of the four corners. For the basting. Correct, for the basting. For you're the not basting. doing the scent, for example, those center rows, you're not going from this uh, red center out to the horizontal. Um, you could. You could do it that way. You could start here and go to there and then go from here to here and there to there and there to there, as long as it's center out. Okay, but that's not necessary as long as you just do center out to each of the four corners. Yes, I think for this size, it's perfectly adequate. Okay, uh, thank you. Sue, the base yes. thing, it just, you know, just for emphasis, the basing is just to hold everything in place before you start to quilt. Yes, thank you very much for that's okay. I think I that was that, that. Yeah, I think that's confusing if you've not done this before. It, thank it, you very much. You're yes. welcome. Yes. So what we're doing with the pins or the basting stitch at this point is we're just holding these layers from shifting because I'm either going to hand sew nice little stitches around each square, or I'm going to put it under the machine and I'm going to sew x's or whatever through all these layers that is the quilting the verb of the word quilt um and the basting keeps your layers from shifting or having something on the back uh wind up doing like this and you've done all this beautiful stitching on the front and you turn it oh, over and it's oh. like oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. ask me how i know okay <laughs> Oh, oh my God. And to rip all that out, it's like, ah. or you see, um, when you're making your layer, be careful of these little threads. So I finished one and way in the center of the back, there was a red thread that you could see on the back of the quilt. It was shining between the batting and the light backing. Oh my gosh. So you do want to be in a clean area, you know, but this is just, we're just playing around and learning. So this one's not that important. Um, and hopefully what I like to do with these little quickie 
demonstrations is go ahead and make your mistakes on these little fun things. I mean, a practical use is a little pot holder or trivet for the kitchen and it gets dirty. And when one day when it's not usable, you compost it or put it in the trash or whatever, right? It's not a big deal. Um, okay. So should I show on the machine now how to do a quarter inch stitch? Sure. sure. Uh, I have a question just about the particular batting that you've given us or what you use. You said you put it in the microwave. Doesn't it have to be um, a special heat uh, to put batting in or will it, will it spark or anything if you put it in? It's 100% cotton. Okay. And I've never oh, had yeah. a problem. No I'm metal not, in it. <laughs> there's right. no metal that it's I'm aware of. Yeah. Take out your pins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't have your pins. Right. <laughs> oh, my right. God. Right. Ah. Yeah, that's the then difference. Then to go there. microwave shopping and you can't sew anymore. That would be terrible. Well, there is some batting that isn't cotton, right? I mean, I've seen that. Um, yeah. Yes. There, there is a type of batting. Uh, the brand name I know of is called Insole Bright, but it's heat resistant and that's something you would not put in the microwave because it kind of has these metals in it to hold and retain the heat more. Yeah, so I, I would only do it with 100% cotton and please feel free, anybody, any of you research on Google, maybe I'm telling you something that's a fire hazard. Dear God, I would never want to do that. So somebody look up um, hot pads burning in the microwave or whatever causing a fire, I guess. <laughs> I've got to go. Do it. I've got to go. I'll catch you next time. Great. Thanks, Joanne. Sure. Okay. If you rest you out of time, I'll just show you how I set up a quarter inch seam on the machine. Sure. Please. So here's my three rows once again. And what I'm going to do here is instead of marking the lines on the square, I'm going to use the presser foot or the um, needle plate of the machine to get my quarter inch seam, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take two from my first row, right sides together, matching up my corners. And nice and perfect, everything's laying nice and square. And I'm gonna put my pins See if I can get a pin that you can see. For my pins, maybe, uh, how far is that? A little less than an inch from the edge. And I like to have my pin sticking out so I can, as I'm sewing along, I pull the pin out. I do not sew over pins. Okay. Now I'm going to come over to my sewing machine. Okay. On. Now on my sewing machine, I use a lot of gray, beige, white, because those colors blend in with everything. Sorry, I'm wiggling you guys, it's this holder. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is these two that I have pinned I'm gonna know that this is the edge to sew because it's the only one with pins. I do this with garment or any kind of sewing. I pin where I'm gonna sew on the machine. When I run out of pins, I have to stop and come back to my drawing board and see what I'm gonna go next because too many times I keep going around the corners around the corner, and then I'm ripping out and I, I don't like to rip out. On my machine, I actually have um, a special foot called a piecing foot, let's see. And it has these red lines going horizontally and vertically. And you can get this for a lot of machines. It has a tiny little hole where the needle goes in. It's a, it's a straight stitch needle hole. I'll put something dark behind it and see if you see it better. So it's a very little, it's not a zigzag hole. So the problem if you get a piecing foot is that you wanna make sure your needle is in the center sewing position, like for a seam, and you don't switch to a zigzag. If you do, the zigzag is gonna hit the foot and you're gonna break your needle and possibly hurt your machine. 
Have I lost anyone yet? No, but what if you don't have that uh, piercing foot? Uh, if you don't have the piercing foot, piecing. then you'll have piecing. your piercing. Sorry, P I E C I N G. Yeah, piercing. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I mispronounced it. Yes. Piecing. That's okay. P I E C I N G. Okay. okay. Thank you. I just You're welcome. To if you don't have the piercing foot, you want your regular all-purpose foot. Okay. And you want to even take some scrap fabric. And just to make sure you're getting a quarter inch seam, go ahead and mark that line on your fabric on a scrap. Yeah. And test where, put your needle. Can you see it all the machine, ladies? No, no, no. Let me try to move this. Yeah, there's a glare so that we're seeing everything in white. Or okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can um, change my light. It's a fancy what machine. It? What? Yeah. What kind of machine do you have? I have a Husqvarna Viking. Okay. It's an embroidery and sewing machine. And because a great aunt died while I was working for the company and got half price, um, I was able to get myself this totally amazing thing. Can you see it all yet? Better. Yeah. So can you see the line? Yes. Yes. And what I've done is I have my, my foot up. So I lifted my foot and I put the line under. Yeah. And this is only to test the seam. Correct. I turn the needle into the line and then put the foot down. Now this is going to show me exactly where my fabric needs to be to get the quarter inch seam. Gotcha. Now there's two ways to figure this out when you're sewing a lot. One is to see, notice right away, oh, my machine has a mark right there. That's funny. It's got a little groove. And oh, wait a minute. It says quarter inch right there. Who would have known? A lot of machines have that. Some don't. They often, a quilting machine will often come with that foot I was mentioning earlier. Or I like to use painter's tape and just put a piece of tape right in front of the foot now. I don't want the feed dogs to get messed up. So in front of the toe of the foot, place that painter's tape right there. Gotcha, okay. So now I know I'm gonna keep the edge of the fabric right along that edge and that's gonna give me the quarter inch, okay? And then once I've tested this all out, um, the setting would usually be a smaller stitch, uh, like um, was it Lorraine was saying? So I'm probably gonna do a 2.0 length stitch in the center. Um, let's see. And using my previously pinned piece, I'm going to put the cut edge of the fabric with the pins along the side of the tape or the edge of the foot or the line on the machine, whatever my guide is. Now, this is another tip, everyone. Make the whole pieced top with the same machine and setup. Yes. If you use this machine, to do part of it. And then you go somewhere and your friend says, oh, here, borrow my brother XYZ machine. You're not gonna get the same scene. And then if you make a big quilt, it really matters because it's not going to be square. Mm -hmm. On these little mini quilts or little pot holders, it's not as big a deal, but you just wanna do the piecing from beginning to end on one machine or one technique, hand, all of it hand sewing or all of it on that machine or whatever. Now I'm going to go ahead and lower my foot. I'm gonna keep my pin cushion right next to my machine. 
because I take my pins out and stick them right in there. And so right up to my pin, remove it, not sew over it, and then to the next one. And the sewing guiding technique is to let the machine pull the fabric. You are the, the one who's going to steer the fabric and guide it, but let the machine pull it to the speed that it needs for that stitch or for the pressure you put on the foot on the floor. You're gonna make sure at the end when you're kind of losing your tape that you're gonna keep going straight off the edge. Now, when you get really good and you've got tons of these to do, you can go to your next row the two blocks directly underneath, have them pre-pinned or pin them. And then you can do what's called chain on sewing. So I'm not cutting the thread. When you get more confident, you don't have to use pins. Just make sure your corners are perfectly lined up. And now I'm gonna bring this back over to the table. Well, I guess I can't put it in my lap. <laughs> and I have these three sewn from one to the other. Find, well, I'll use my scissors. Can't find my thread snips. And I'll snip the thread between and the long tails. I'll bring it back to the table. So Sue, you don't double stitch it at the end of each uh, square? No, I do not. It just adds bulk and it is a 2.0 stitch length, so it doesn't need it. Oh. So here I've got my partial rows. I'm going to add the other pieces on the end. I'll go ahead and stick a pin in these. So I'm going to sew this one on the end of here. And when I have multiple sides and I'm not sure if I have a pin, even if I don't need it, the pin shows me which seam to sew. Hey Sue. Yeah. This is Lorraine, I have to go. All right, sweetie. Thank you so much. Okay. I hope Thank to see you next week. Yeah, you will. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I've got these on the end. I'm gonna sew those and I'll have my three rows complete. Now the whole time, my eyes are watching the edge of the fabric on the edge of the tape mm -hmm. and keeping that consistent. Once again, no knot, and I'm just gonna use my cutter on the side of the machine. And now I'm going to do the same with the pressing of the seams. 
Go to the back, press these seams in mm -hmm. toward the center, these out toward the side, these out toward the side, and nest. Now this, because I'm here in my, on my machine next to my iron, I usually get out my iron and I press. I don't iron, I press the seams to the side, get them nice and nested. So when you're pressing, it's still kind of a little steam coming from the iron, right? You have to- No, once again, I don't steam when I quilt and use starch. The starch is still in the fabric. Oh. And um, I don't know, I just, I don't know why I stop steaming when I do quilting. I guess because you don't really use it with the, I don't know. Maybe someone told me that, I don't know. But I just use a, a hot iron with no water. And I don't have to worry about my quilt getting wet. Yeah. When my iron leaks. So that might be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> so now for this row, I'm gonna sew across. And I can double check when I get to the seams, you know, are they still nesting? They are, the pin is working. So here's part of my block. Going to add the other piece. Beautiful. And I have my corners together. Wow. And I will press this vertical seam open so that I have less bulk here in the corners. Oh. Right. Oh. And then same thing as we did before, you're going to layer the back with the batting, the block in the center, and pin or needle and thread based the layers together in preparation for the quilting through the layers. Gotcha. Okay. What do you think? Beautiful. Wow. Love it. You like it? Yes. That's okay. amazing. <laughs> Beautiful oh. edges. Yes. Beautiful edges. Thank you. Thank Very you. Well. I'll wear it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, when you go to the actual quilting um, by hand, it's the same basic thing, but we're not going to do any back stitching. By machine, um, for a small quilt, it won't matter too much. But when you get to bigger quilts, there's something called a walking foot, W A L K I N G. And usually I make my stitches a little longer. So it might be instead of a 2.0, it might be a 3.0, 3.5 length because you have the thickness you're going through. And then final is the binding. Wow. So yeah, next that looks week, really nice. So next Thank you. Week, okay, I'm sorry. So next week we, we, we actually do the quilting and the binding. Yes. yes. Okay. I would like to we'll try that. Ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Sure. Okay. And the, the first cool thing I'm going to show you is stitch in the ditch, and then I'll show you some echo, and you could do some decorative things if you want to draw something. I mean, you can get really artsy, but we just want to get through the steps. 
I think, just to have experienced the traditional steps. And then, um, you know, whatever else you want to do after that, you guys just have to think about what you want to see, or please, somebody, demonstrate to us something that you make. Anybody want to volunteer anything right now or want to think about it? Well, I just have a question. Uh, you said next week we're meeting again. Next Friday? Yes. Ah, bummer. And I'm not going to be here. Okay. Well, it will be um, on, on its recording. It will be recorded, right? It will be recorded. <sighs> Okay, well, I and you know cool. you know my um, email. What yes. is the email? Oh, Christine, yes, you don't have it, and um, Lorraine. Oh, she had to leave. She had to go. So my email is. I'll say it first, and then I'll spell it. It's <laughs> so with Sue at Gmail. At Gmail. Okay. So it's S E W yeah. W I T H S U E at Gmail. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. And then if you like, unless you tell me otherwise, when I email the group, I'll include you a uh, blind copy. Sure. BCC. Thank you. That's, that's uh, at gmail.com, right? At gmail.com. So I have a little, little paper I keep in my purse so I don't lose it because everything else gets misplaced. <laughs> and I just, you know, make a little thing and I put BCC and I put your name on and then I'll keep you up with what's going on. And so uh as I hear from Michelle what's going on with the different meetings and things, I'll let you know. Yes, Sharon. Um, so of course, I'm, this is my first time doing this. So I'm trying to do it by hand. And yes. so how soon will the video, because I was trying to do it as you would along, of course, I couldn't keep up because I'm doing it by hand. But um, how soon does the video, will? do you know when it'll be available? Yeah, okay. Sharon, Sharon okay. um, just to be completely, honest um okay sue doesn't know that she doesn't have that oh, answer oh, oh. Uh, i because i'm the recordings all go to me the problem is is that i'm so swamped with trying to get this in the portal for people to sign up for anything and i'm literally working okay. you know I, I i'm so far behind i can't really worry about recordings right now okay it, it is recorded it's somewhere so, okay. but I'm so I'm so in the weeds right now. I can't make any promises. Um, so so all I'll do is I'll, I'll work on whatever I can, whatever I remember. I took some screenshots, and then next week, if you know wherever I am, I'll just ask questions. And email me Sue or email okay. email me. Okay. Oh. So so have you sent emails out to people? Am I like missing it, or I I, I haven't uh, remember Mary, getting anything. Perhaps perhaps. Um, okay. I, I believe I included you the last one, I, last two I sent out. It was to say um, the kits were ready. Yes. Yeah. Um, see, and I, 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 I obviously have picked it up myself, Sue, but, but I didn't get that message to say that they were ready. So, so could, you, could you do me a favor, please, Marianne, and yes. send me a message okay. with, that maybe the subject is, this is my email. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And I'll reply I have, and yeah, I'll have, I, no, yeah, you I have already corresponded. Yes, Christine. But, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I, yeah. Okay, good. I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. But because it's not posted, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, thank you. Awesome. Great. So I'll see you guys in a week. Okay, okay, I'll practice. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Great weekend. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. See, I must say, the precision you're working at is just yeah. great because I'm used to just kind of, you know, well, you hoping know. for the best always, but you do it <laughs> precisely. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I thank you. Yeah, I like the steps and you're showing. Yeah, it, it, you, you're doing a good job. You do. Well, thank you. I've had a lot job. of training, especially with the Husqvarna Viking sewing machine company. We went away before the uh, problem with the economy and all. We I was sent away to conventions and I know all about sergers and stuff oh. that if you guys want me to keep showing you stuff, if you're yeah. friendly to me and stay nice, then <laughs> <laughs> show you all of it, I know. I, I would really love to learn how to surge. I don't have that 
machine or anything, but you know, I just love what it can do. So, but that's a that's for another. You know, I don't even know what surging is. So. So, oh gosh, well, so what all all the future. That's what all those maybe, maybe thread, when right? we finish the um yeah. the quilt block. Um, especially if we can be in person, I'll bring my surger one day and just let you play with it or show it to you. Mm, mm. Awesome. Well, That's good. a whole other so whole other tool, another <laughs> sewing tool. Oh, I know. I know. We, we have a lot of other sewing things to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> surger, we do. yes, we do. The surge is a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you guys. Bye, Thank everybody. You so Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'll, I'll, Bye. Keep I'll keep practicing. <laughs> Good job, Sharon. Uh, reach out to me if you need help, please. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sharon, I'm going to call you right now, Sharon. Okay. I'm here. Great. Bye. Great. Yeah, Bye. you help with Jennifer. I know you know what you're doing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, I had sewing classes like 25 years ago, and I thought I knew everything, but now I'm finding I really know nothing. I, I That's why sewn, I say. I haven't sewn since seventh grade. <laughs> But you can so oh, there's so much to it. You can spend the rest of your life enjoying and learning more. Yeah. And I should be I should be embarrassed. My mother sewed. My mother even had one of those old fashioned singers with the treadle or treadle or whatever. And nice. then she had a, she had a Viking, a beautiful Viking. And she when she passed away, before she passed away, she said, "Oh, this Viking it still works great." Blah blah blah. So I took it. It was guess it wasn't meant for me to have because. It kept locking and locking. I kept putting the shop, and eventually I put it out on the curb for bundles for you know bulky day. I just and I felt bad. I just wanted to keep it for just for sentimental sake. And I said, "Stop doing that." So I got rid. Of it. Oh yeah. Sometimes wow. when machines stop working, just like cars, yeah, you know that's just it's it. Time. You don't want to continue to frustrate yourself. But right. when, when you get to repair people and they tell you X, Y, and Z, and you know it's the end, you. Yeah, yeah. It has to be recycled. <laughs> yeah, she could sew. My grandmother could sew. My, Me my too. father could. My father could sew. He could tailor oh, stuff. I amazing. just didn't get that gene. Yeah, my father. <laughs> oh, he you have like it in a, your genes. He, it wasn't. It was in my sister's genes. My 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 next oh. sister up. She yeah, she was magnificent. Yeah, she was good. How about oh. you, Christine? What's your experience? I had a great sewing teacher in seventh grade. I made a smock top that Easter vacation. It took me two weeks. I tie dyed it. And that's, I've kind of played around, but haven't created anything so creative since then. Right? <laughs> Durndle skirts. Do you remember making Durndle skirts? Oh, and gosh. With the yes. elastic waist. <laughs> you remember those little kerchief triangle things we used to make? Oh my God, I could go on and on. Oh, the yeah. stuff oh I've made God. and regretted it later, I'll tell you. Right? <laughs> That's where right, all of you sound. Beth? Thank you. Beth, how old you? I'm basting. I'm <laughs> how, how long have you sewn? How old? Oh, how young? <laughs> probably 12, 13. Uh -huh. wow. and, and Jennifer, how about you? How long have I been sewing? Yeah. Um, my mother used to sew, and if you can remind me when I see you sometime, after you take a picture out, my mother had three daughters, oh. and she lined us up and bought a, a fab, a fabric for all of us, and she just sewed three dresses all the same. At Christmas time, she'd sew three dresses for each each of us, so it was nine dresses she showed. So, wow. And she yeah, my, just... Yeah. She my really mother used to make job. those jumpers with the blouse. Remember, we used to wear jumpers and a blouse underneath. She used to make those jumpers with the match with the little white with white blouses. And then my grandmother made my made our communion yeah. dresses that were gorgeous. I wish my mother had kept them. My mother wasn't real sentimental. I don't know what she did with our communion dresses, but they but were. They probably beautiful. went to passed on to someone else, you know. Yeah, she probably did. She probably gave it to yeah. some other yeah. little girl that was. Yeah. I have pictures and, and I'm going to get find it and show it to you. The three that's of us. Great. Oh, that's great. Identical <laughs> twins with three identical dresses. <laughs> Little triplets. <laughs> so adorable. So adorable. Great. Okay, you guys. Okay. Well, I'm say goodbye. Okay. Thank you. I'll see bye you. Bye. Have a great weekend.